Good evening, Oswego, and welcome to WTOP 10 Wednesday Night News, your connection to Oswego and beyond. I'm Alex Rosilla. And I'm Katie Husband. Today is March 2nd, and this is your news, sports, and weather all before the first commercial break. Let's take a look at your top stories. 10 News starts now. Congress passes a spending bill which will keep the government operational for two more weeks. Republicans included $4 billion in cuts within this bill. House Republicans want to return to their original plan to cut roughly $60 billion from the federal budget over the remainder of the fiscal year. Funding for President Obama's policy victories, including the health care and Wall Street reform laws, would be blocked, as well as federal funding for Planned Parenthood and PBS, as well as the Environmental Protection Agency. After days of turmoil in Libya, the United States is suggesting a no-fly zone option to help push Muammar Gaddafi from power to prevent violence in ending his regime. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton spoke on this issue. With respect to uh, the no-fly zone, uh, we have been discussing that with a lot of our allies and um, are looking at it, but there are many, uh, many challenges associated with it. So, at this time, uh, we're focusing on how we can get medical supplies and food into the people who are in safe enough zones that it can be delivered to assist them uh, as they try to rid themselves of this regime. The no-fly zone is helpful. Whether they are civilian or military aircrafts, they will not get shot at. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates says an effort to create a no-fly zone in Libya has to start with an attack on the country. The Security Council must find evidence that Gaddafi is using air forces to bomb his civilians to consider the no-fly zone option. And now we'll check our current conditions outside with our own meteorologist Tara Hecke. Tara, what's it looking like out there? I'm sure it's pretty cold. Hello everyone and good evening. I'm meteorologist Tara, Tara Hecke. We had a cold front come through our region today around 8 a.m. bringing us snow, pretty blustery winds, and cold arctic air from the north. But we did get some sunshine and that was very nice of Mother Nature. So Mother Nature, I thank you. Um, right now I'm outside the campus center taking a look at our current conditions. We're at 20 degrees. Our winds have died down a bit at uh, 5 to 10 from the north and we're under pretty cloudy skies. Let me give you a quick forecast. Tonight we're going to get down to 4. Our winds are going to stay pretty constant, but that wind chill is bringing us down into the negatives. Now overnight our skies will be clearing, but that does not mean that tomorrow will be warmer. We're going to get only up to 20 degrees and it's going to be a really sunny day, so we get to wear our sunglasses, but that does not mean that we can wear shorts. It's gonna be a very deceiving day, and our wind chills are gonna stay in the negatives. I'll give you my full forecast when I get back inside. Now to the desk. For days, rebels in eastern Libya were arming themselves, preparing for an attack from forces loyal to leader Muammar Gaddafi. On Wednesday, they got that fight. CNN's Ben Weedman was in the thick of the battle near Brega. Early Wednesday morning, Libyan forces conducted an attack on the town of Brega, which is on the very edge of the area controlled by the opposition forces. It's a strategically critical town because there's a very large oil refinery with export facilities, as well as a natural gas processing plant, uh, which feeds gas to the entire uh, rest of the country. Uh, throughout the day, there were running battles between opposition forces and the Libyan army. Uh, the death toll is not clear at this point. We did go to one hospital outside Brega where we saw four bodies in the morgue. Doctors telling us more than two dozen people uh, were killed. But there are other air hospitals in that area which were also taking in uh, dead and wounded. By the end of the day, opposition forces were able to take control of the town. What we did see during the day was intense activity by Libyan Air Force jets. Uh, we were with one group of fighters just outside of Brega uh, when we saw one of those jets fly overhead, first dropping a bomb in Brega itself and then flying right over us and dropping another bomb. In that instance, nobody was killed or injured, but later in the day, we were with a group of fighters and local residents who were celebrating the expulsion of Libyan armed forces uh, from the town of Brega when yet again a jet flew overhead, 
dropped a bomb that landed just at the edge of the crowd. Uh, there were casualties, but we had to rush out of the area because we were afraid another bomb uh, would fall. At this point, it does appear that the opposition is once again in full control of Brega, but the Libyan forces still loyal to Muammar Gaddafi are just outside of that town. I'm Ben Wiedemann, CNN, reporting from Benghazi. More than 16,000 acres of central Florida land has burned. Firefighters battling the blaze are scrambling to get ahead of winds that could dampen their efforts to battle the fire. A stretch of Interstate 95 was closed for a time today. The Florida Department of Agriculture, set, our Agriculture said the fire began Monday in northern Brevard and southern Volga counties. It has destroyed a mobile home, several outbuildings, and multiple camp structures. A department spokesperson said, quote, Fortunately, no residences seem to be in imminent danger. Businesses are passing on surging costs to consumers, hiring is modest, wages are barely rising, and the housing market is still struggling. But according to the Federal Reserve, the economy is expanding at a, quote, modest and moderate pace. Retailers and manufacturers across all 12 of the Federal Reserve's districts are seeing higher input costs. The Fed also reported little evidence of wages increasing in most of its districts. And let's go over to Jonathan Kahn for your look at what's going on in sports. Good evening. This is your Oswego State Sports Update. Oswego State has chosen not only to host the first round of the NCAA tournament, but now the second. Max Seal Gym will have two games Friday, first between Penn State Barron and Rhode Island College, and the nightcap Wells College against your Oswego State Lakers. Their winners will play Saturday at 7 p.m. with a place in the sectional round at stake. Tickets will be $6 for adults and 3 for students with valid IDs. All campus box offices will be available for ticket purchasing. I'll have more sports coming up in a bit. For now, let's send it back to Alex at the desk. The victims of sexual harassment receive a total of more than $1 million against Paul's Big M in Oswego. The 10 victims may be receiving a little bit less in punitive damages. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has filed a motion to cap each award at $50,000. In a motion filed in Syracuse, the EEOC reviewed the verdict and they determined that the jury awards exceed the cap on damages allowed by the Civil Rights Act of 1991. The statute limits punitive damages for businesses with less than 100 employees to only 50,000. One of the women was originally awarded more than a quarter million dollars. The Ontario Centre for Performing Arts is featuring a genre-binding trio Saturday night. Mad Agnes performs folk, folk rock, and classical songs. The performance is at the McCroby Civic Centre at 8 p.m. in the farewell tour of the group. The trio is made up of Margot Hennenbach, Adrian Jones, and Mark Saunders, all from Connecticut. Mad Agnes has delights, insights, and heals their listeners. A Fulton man learns he will spend up to his next 18 years in prison today. 80-year-old William Levia was arrested for an alcohol-related vehicle crash in November of 2009. The crash led to the death of Camillus resident Christopher Speck. According to the Cayuga County Sheriff's Department, Levia repeatedly rammed his vehicle into the back of Speck's pickup truck as it was moving forward. This caused it to crash into an oncoming vehicle near the intersection of Routes 370 and 176 in Cato. Tune for your full forecast after the break. You're watching WTOP 10. One West Bridge Street, uh, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315 342 4255. The SUNY Oswego Music Department will host its fifth annual collage concert this weekend. The overall theme is the very eclectic nature of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a quick juxtapositions from one act to the next. We're going to have a mix of the large student ensembles, which includes the college community orchestra, the college choir, the state singers, the jazz ensemble. Be sure to catch the collage concert this Saturday at 4 p.m. in Waterman Theater. Was gonna be there anyway. We're thinking of you, working on 
MBA program helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year round, full or part time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315 312 2911. Taking a look at your campus news now. And now we're going to take a look at your campus news and we're going to head it over to our package. Yes, we go is offering students a new event to attend. Lifestyles After Dark takes place every Thursday in Penfield Library's Lake Effect Cafe with the opportunity for students to participate in open mic every other Thursday throughout the semester. After Dark is a free event with free coffee for all students. I spoke with Lifestyles coordinators Jessica Ryan and Mary Cole, and they are hoping this event becomes an alternative choice for students instead of going out drinking, and are thrilled with how the event has been going so far. Well, we've already watched it grow and progress since last semester, and our turnout, like, this is awesome. This is what we've been looking for, is a huge turnout like this. Since its start at the beginning of the spring 2011 semester, it has been a great success so far and popular with students. Everyone here is nice, too. Like, there's no one laughing at people who are bad and stuff like that, so it's a really friendly environment. Well, I think it's a great experience to get out and be in front of an audience and kind of get that feel. and show yourself and promotion wise people come out here and they like your music they're going to want more from you and i think that's great yeah it's really cool and everyone seems really good the music's pretty good so as you can see the lifestyles after dark event has been very successful so far and in the future the hope is that it will continue to be an outlet for students to show off their amazing talents for wtop 10 news i'm stephanie sweeney and now I am here with Amy Ryan, who is the producer of a local movie called Ned Chronicle of a Serial Killer. Now I know everyone out there just wants to know what this is basically and why you know they should be interested in it. Um, it's a low-budget movie that we filmed all here in Oswego, and it's basically a normal individual that has demons or something in his house, he's not sure what, and they kind of drive him crazy. Now this was shot from a, a third person angle we mm -hmm. were talking about earlier. Is that, does that give it a different, like a spice? Or uh, how does that kind of add to it, I guess? It, <laughs> it definitely gives you a different perspective. Instead um, of me just saying it. It's yeah, it's, <laughs> nobody's telling you the story as in, like you're watching the movie, they're, you're seeing it for yourself. Now, um, we were talking earlier, and you said that the preview nights, or the, it's going to be Friday and Saturday night, 11 p.m., right here in town at the Oswego Cinema. Yes. And is it okay with you? We're going to give them a little bit of a preview of what they're going to get to see Friday, Saturday at 11. Sure. So we're going to take a look at that real quick. That was intense. I can't think of any <laughs> other word to describe that better. Now, just um, one question I had was about how many people um, were involved in the production of this? Was it small or was it a little um, bigger? No, it was small. It was, uh, Eric, oh, there was like six of us. Ten so of six us. Six people. That's, Ten not, of that's not that much. I mean, you have a yeah. lot of the Hollywood movies having hundreds of yeah. thousands even of people. Um, but thank you very much for stopping by. Bridie Manor, 9 p.m., that's where it's going to uh, kick off, then 11 p.m. on Friday. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for thank stopping you. by. Thanks. Ned Chronicle of a Serial Killer. Check it out. And after this, we're going to take a look at your forecast with Tara Heckey.
Thanks, Alex. That movie looked pretty scary to me just by looking at the previews. I'm meteorologist Tara Heckey. Let's take a look at your almanac. Today we hit a high of uh, 37. Our low is our current temperature at 20. Pretty average, average for the day. Our record was at 62 in 1991 and a horrible negative 13 in 1988. We had a trace of snow today, but uh, most of that snow blew off campus, so we didn't really record anything pretty consistent. Um, our sunrise was at 641 and our sunset at 555. Our days are getting longer. Local temperatures, pretty 19, 20, 21. That's because of our cold front that moves through, keeping those temperatures pretty much the same throughout our close region. Our New York State weather, we um, are at 19 up in Plattsburgh, 15 in Watertown on the other edge of New York State, Buffalo, and even New York City is down at 30 below temperature. We don't see that very often. Our weather tap radar showing really nothing through the region, nothing for us to worry about. We do see some rain that we saw earlier, but nothing really. Um, our satellite showing thicker clouds through our area, maybe some clearing up, up towards Canada, but we'll see that later in our forecast. Future cast tonight, no, no snow, no rain, nothing to really worry about. Um, for tomorrow morning, again, nothing really to worry about here. And then uh, Thursday afternoon, not really seeing anything either. But we do have a little bit of snow that might be affecting our forecast later on. Now for tonight, we're going to get down to that four that I talked about. We might have some flurries and some pretty cold wind chills that we have to worry about. Our winds will stay five to 10 out of the north. Now Thursday, 20 degrees, it will look like a nice day, but it's not a nice day because it's going to have negative wind chill, negative temperatures, and our winds are going to be calm from the north, but I, I see it as a good day, but most people, 20 does not sound like a good day. Thursday night, 13, a warm front will slowly be moving through our region. Our winds uh, 10 to 15 miles an hour from the south. And then Friday, we're, we're gonna have snow to start our day, and around the afternoon is when that warm front will complete its passage through our region with rain in the afternoon. Our winds will shift from south and become a little quicker at 15 to 20 miles per hour. And here's my extended forecast. Thursday, we see that really sunny day, but it's only gonna get about to 20. Friday is gonna be snow, rain, 36. Saturday, more rain, 50 degrees we'll get up to though. Sunday looks like a pretty sunny day with some clouds coming into our area, 33 degrees. Monday, back to the flurries at 26. And Tuesday, a pretty, pretty cloudy day and staying at around the higher, higher 20s. Thank you for that, Tara. We're going to kick it over to break now. But first, a look at your late night menu. the very eclectic nature of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a quick juxtapositions from one act to the next. We're going to have a mix of the large student ensembles, which includes the college community orchestra, the college choir, the state singers, the jazz ensemble. Be sure to catch the Collage concert this Saturday at 4 p.m. in Waterman Theater. The Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Hi, we're Real Big Fish. And you're watching WTOP10. Like the number. Cam's Pizzeria, located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315 342 4255.
Welcome back. And now here's Amy Adamchick with a word on health and wellness tonight. Thanks, Katie. And good evening, Oswego. Are you sick with the flu? New research raises hope for a universal cure for influenza. According to CNN, researchers from Oxford University are working towards a new treatment that will control all future flu pandemics. The new vaccine works by targeting protein cells inside the influenza virus instead of current vaccines that attack the outside of the virus. Head of the project, Sarah Gilbert, says more work is required before the vaccine becomes available. She is estimating a wait of at least five years, but says the results are a fundamental next step in the treatment of the flu. Does staying in hotel rooms make you uneasy? Microbiologist Philip Tierno compared the debris left in hotel beds to the remains of Roman civilization. He says particles are quote unquote literally buried over time in the beds. So what exactly is lurking in the mattress of your overnight stay? Tierno says skin cells, human hair, fungi, bacteria, cosmetics, lint, insect parts, and even more. Some hotel chains are now using waterproof mattresses, mattress covers, and ditching the bedspreads to ease customer concerns. Although you may feel uncomfortable, exposure to germs in hotel rooms is generally nothing some thorough hand washing can't fix. A handshake, hug, or massage. A simple touch may actually be the ultimate mind-body medicine. According to health.com, touch lowers blood pressure and heart rate to increase immune function and relieve pain. Studies show touch makes you happier, less anxious, and not to mention, healthier. Embracing another floods the body with oxytocin, which makes one feel more secure and less stressed. According to research from the University of North Carolina, Women who get more hugs from their partners have shown higher levels of oxytocin and lower blood pressure and heart rates. And that's all for your health and wellness segment. This week, I'm Amy Adamchick. So that's some crazy right. stuff. Yeah. That I heard the germs in the hotels. I just kind of left about <laughs> yep. Kind of makes me nervous because I'm going away for a spring break. So. Uh -huh. All righty. And more news now. It looks like dairy farmers are going to get their fair share for the milk they worked so hard to produce. Senator Gillibrand has a proposal which prevents cuts to their milk income loss contract, program and fixing the milk pricing system. This proposal could help your New York milk producers to have competitive prices. The plan can also help increase milk exports in the state. Gillibrand says, quote, farmers do not get paid for the milk they produce. They don't get a fair price. They don't get a price that's based on cost of production. And that's all that she had to say, end quote. Fiscal analysts from the Division of the Budget, as well as the four legislative conferences, released a revenue forecast saying New York's recovery is on its way. Thursday, Governor Andrew Cuomo will release his 30-day amendments to the executive budget. They will include the changes he recommended by his recently formed Medicaid resign team. And now let's see what's going on in sports with our own Jonathan Kahn. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jonathan Kahn, and here's what's making headlines in your sports world. One former tennis world number one could be out for up to a year with a life-threatening condition. Serena Williams was treated for a pulmonary embolism after being diagnosed last week. The 13-time Grand Slam champion has not played an official match since winning Wimbledon last July. Williams said in a statement about her expected return time, quote, While I can't make any promises on my return, I hope to be back by early summer. That said, my main goal is to make sure I get there safely. Williams will need treatment for her hematoma and is likely to make a full recovery. There are specific rules about beverages on the basketball court, but for one off court has landed a BYU player in hot water. Sophomore Brandon Davies has been dismissed from the basketball team for breaking the Cougars honor code. The code which ranges from breaking chastity or substance abuse or as little as drinking coffee or tea. BYU released a statement saying that the violation was not anything of a criminal manner. BYU is currently ranked third in the nation with a 27-2 record. And with this new dismissal, they have not only lost a starter, but a chance of winning a number one spot in the big dance. With the MLB spring training season only a week old, most players aren't worrying about firings. 
That is, of course, unless you're Mark Teixeira. The Yankees' all-star first baseman has joined the list of Bronx Bombers who have fired agent Scott Boris. On ending their business arrangement, Tex said, quote, Sometimes business relationships just run their course. For me and my family right now, this is the best decision. Boris most notably negotiated an eight-year, $180 million deal in 2008 that landed to share in the Bronx. The relationship between Tex and Boris dates back 12 years when the Yankees superstar was still a prospect with Georgia Tech. That's it for sports. I'm Jonathan Kahn. Let's send it back to the desk. And now we'll cut to break, but first, your community calendar. WTOP 10, your television. Cam's Pizzeria, located at 31 West Bridge Street, serving New York style pizza, wings, sandwiches, wraps, and desserts. Dine in, take out, or order delivery by calling 315 342 4255. TOP. The SUNY Oswego Music Department will host its fifth annual collage concert this weekend. The overall theme is the very eclectic nature of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's a quick juxtapositions from one act to the next. We're going to have a mix of the large student ensembles, which includes the college community orchestra, the college choir, the state singers, the jazz ensemble. Be sure to catch the collage concert this Saturday at 4 p.m. in Waterman Theater. Oswego MBA program, helping you achieve your goals with a customized curriculum developed with flexibility in mind. Take classes year-round, full or part-time in Oswego online or at the Metro Center in downtown Syracuse. More information is available online or by calling 315-312-2911. Still trying to fight this economy, according to one comedian, Conan O'Brien, President Obama is hard at work. President Obama working hard to jumpstart the economy. The co-founder of AOL recently joined President Obama's Council on Economic Competitiveness. That's right. The AOL co-founder said, gentlemen, I've got three words that are going to change your life. Dial up internet. <laughs> Now, Tara, can you tell us a little bit about what weather we should uh, expect to be seeing this yes. weekend? It's going to be cold. We're only going to get up to 20, and the wind chill is going to make it unbearable. We're probably, it'll feel like negatives, plain negatives. It's not so, so pretty much bad news is what she's saying. Or a yeah. typical Oswego uh, <laughs> end of winter, pretty much. Yep. Mm -hmm. Spring is not back. It's not back yet? No. So no. I should not go out running in shorts and a t-shirt tomorrow is what you're saying? Absolutely not. All right, I might have to end up Definitely actually not. end up going to the And game. that will do it here for us at <laughs> WTOP 10 News. But stay tuned for the weekly rundown with Anthony Hill. And uh, that's coming up next on WTOP. For the 10 News team. I'm Katie Husband. I'm Jonathan Kahn. I'm Tara Hockey. And I'm Alex Rosilla. Have a pleasant night and a better tomorrow.